Thanks for tuning in. Searching for truth here. Uh, so the Super Bowl ritual did not disappoint, huh? I don't know how many of you guys watched it. I know I did just for the um, to look for the symbolism and see what they were going to do. Uh, first off, let me go ahead and get a little prayer in. Father, I just ask that this messenger reach those it needs to reach, that the message that I convey would be the things that you would have me to say. In your precious son's name I pray. All right, so let's get right into it. So, obviously, the message was the women's empowering movement. Um, they took some political stabs, supposedly. Um, I was reading some articles about the way that they flipped the script, essentially, on what was really going on um, as far as the news were to, to break it down. Um, I don't know if any of you paid any attention or saw the kids in the cages, thought that was a little strange. Yes, it's very strange, considering it's showing kids in cages. It's basically going um, against the, the child trafficking uh, and the sexualization of these little girls. I don't know if any of you guys paid attention. They're all in these little short skirts dancing around like the adults are. They're making it normal for kids to be adults. Um, anyway... If you look into it at all, they're going to say that the reason that they did the cages was to um, take a jab at Trump and the border crisis, essentially. It was a subtle border crisis statement for Latinas. Um, I think the song that they sang after they got out of the cages had something to do with Born in the USA. First, they sang um, J-Lo's J song, Let's Get Loud. Um, if you want to live your life, live it all the way and don't waste it. Uh, life's a party, make it hot. Dance, don't ever stop, whatever rhythm, every minute, every day. Just uh, another garbage song, and these little kids were dancing around. Um, but like I said, they um, they did the Born in the USA. They um, basically, it could have been a jab at the fact that, you know, most these families and getting separated from their their families on the border because all the illegal immigrants here are being deported and so they're essentially saying that they were born in the USA so they shouldn't be and I'm not here to talk about that stuff I'm just saying they had kids in cages uh, what is that referencing um, well the gilded cage which is in the song limelight by rush Gilded cage. It's a place where someone appears to live in luxury, but where he or she has very little freedom. Um, the Rush song is, All the world's indeed a stage, and we're merely players, performers, and portrayers. Each another's audience outside the gilded cage. So trying to be outside the gilded cage. Um, the beginning of that song is, Living on a lighted stage approaches the unreal for those who think and feel in touch with some reality beyond the gilded cage. So they don't have freedoms. They are a slave to the system. They're a slave to their handlers. They, they're they not allowed to do, you know, the things that, that they would want to do because they signed this contract in blood, so they have to do, they have to fulfill what they're told to fulfill. So the entire stage was... A giant ritual circle in the middle of this uh, football field. Um, Shakira, she ends up singing. She starts one of her songs. It's called The Empire. When the empires of the world unite, we are alive. So I don't know if anyone understands that, but that is the United Nations. They're the empires of the world that are uniting. So there was a, a hint at what they're, what is to come. Uh, like I said, it was a giant ritual circle that they were doing and performing in. Um, someone, oh, I watched Hacking the Headlines, and she pointed out a very good point. I was trying to figure out why Shakira and everyone that she was singing with in the beginning were all in red, and uh, Hacking the Headlines tied it together. It made sense. Uh, if you've seen The Matrix, there's the lady in red in one of the simulations that um, Neo goes through, and she is 
a distraction. She's the lady in red in the red dress. She's a distraction. Uh, aside from the training and the simulation that's going on, this lady walks by and essentially distracts the person that's supposed to be fighting or whatever they're supposed to be doing. Anyway, she is a distraction in her red dress. That's that's what we're getting at. Um, the stage itself, like I said, was a giant ritual circle. It turned into, um, when the kids were out there in their cages, it turned into a giant uh, sign for the female, because there's the male sign and the female sign. Uh, when J-Lo got out there, she um, she had her dancers in black and white coloring. You know, we look for the black and white um, checkerboards, like on, on the floor and, and stuff like that, but these folks were just wearing the, the black and white um, clothing. So it was a duality. Um, as above, so below. Uh, like I said, they're all in the ritual circle. At one point, uh, J Lo was standing, and the entire um, stage appeared to collapse. Like it's the collapse of the world, and the gates of hell are opening. Uh, Shakira is dancing in a huge ring of fire at one point. Um, the pole dancing. So J Lo is up on the pole with her arms spread wide as she would be simulating or blaspheming uh, Jesus on the cross, and um, they're all bowing down at her feet. They're all laying down, bowing down at her feet. Shakira has a similar moment. She's got her arms stretched wide, and she has all of the the dancers bowing down to her as well. Um, as if she is a god herself or goddess. Uh, one of the guys, he has a tattoo of a pentagram or star on his hand. There is uh, one point, one of the pictures that was snapped, it's like smoke billowing off from the stage. It ends up looking like a pyramid. Um, the girls, like I said, they're sexualizing the young girls dancing out there. It, it's, it was all just a big show. A big ritual, and it happened to be on the cross quarter date, which is uh, between the uh, winter solstice and the spring equinox. So it's a very powerful day for them. They always make these things happen on, you know, powerful days. They do rituals on powerful days. The men out there dancing are very feminine looking. Um, they're also wearing these weird pieces of, I guess you call it clothing, around their throats and chest. Kind of reminds me sort of like an Egyptian type look, which, you know, all these, they pay homage back to their Egyptian gods and goddesses. Um, oh, the cages. There were 18 cages out there. Is that not odd? Um, 18 cages, meaning eight, uh, nine, or... If you broke 18 down, it's 666. You can add 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 666. Six, six, it's 18. Um, there was a lot of red. A lot of red was happening. Like I said, it was a giant ritual uh, circle that they were doing, that they were performing in. Um, let's see. Like I said, the, the men and the the women were very sexualized, Egyptian-type looking. Uh, Hacking the Headlines also pointed out something to do with the One World Trade Tower, which when Jennifer Lopez first came out to get on the pole, um, she was wearing pink and black, and it appears to look like the tower, um, the One World Trade Tower. Uh, the reason that the One World Trade Tower, as Hacking the Headline said, was in pink and illuminated that way was to support um, abortion, full-term abortions, which is disgusting. It's just the way that they can kill more people and ch children and uh, get more power, as they think. Uh, again, they're, they're worshipping J Lo as she's on the pole, they you know they just look like they're falling down and worshiping her. She's a she's a goddess. The same with Shakira, they're all falling down to worship her. She's a goddess. Um, I'm not really sure the black that um, J Lo had on. 
It kind of reminds me of Beyonce when she came out in Super Bowl 50, kind of paying a little homage to Michael Jackson, which could be something that J Lo is doing in this instance. Um, again, Shakira and her red. Ah, the the silver and gold. So J Lo ends up wearing very provocative clothing, but it's essentially like broken glass is what she's wearing, um, which they they break their altars. They the occult meaning for broken glass symbolizes something that is brittle, weak, or vulnerable, fragile, and easily damaged. So she's saying that she can be easily um, controlled or manipulated, which she is, obviously. She's 50 years old, and she looks amazing. I'll give her that. However, comma, why? She's been given all this power because she does exactly as she was told to do. Uh, a reason they could be wearing the silver and gold, they it gives them more power in their rituals. They're, they're witches, they are. Uh, the spiritual meaning of silver... Restores equilibrium and stability to both feminine power and spiritual energy. So that could be why they're uh, flashing the silver and the gold. Um, means success, achievement, and triumph. The uttermost level. This is a color which is associated with higher ideals, wisdom, understanding, and enlightenment. So I could foresee them using this as obviously a symbol as well. The females that are dancing are in... The Egyptian looking, I don't really know what you call it, what they're wearing, but uh, J-Lo's flashing the devil horns. They're, oh, the the born in the USA thing. So she she put on this cloak, I guess you call it, and it's American flag, and then she opens it up, and it's the Puerto Rican flag. So I don't really know a whole lot of what that's got to do with anything, but they were screaming born in the USA as she was flashing all of this stuff. More of the ritual circle. Ah, some of the commercials were a bit odd, too. I don't know if anyone paid attention, but there was one specifically that was with Post Malone, and I thought it was very iconic because he, was, he walked into the store and he asked the dude if he had some Bud Light or whatever. Well, the dude pointed to the back of the store. Well, when he gets back there, they show inside of his head, because he finds some Bud Light seltzer or whatever, and they show inside of his head, and there's these dudes inside of his head, like these, these dudes and these chicks inside of his head, and they are controlling his, his mind. It's mind control, literally, like deciding what he should choose to drink it's a little crazy and then so they start using this joystick to make him pick these things it's utterly mind control and they showed it to us in plain sight and you know nobody really paid attention they just think it's funny that's the bad part is they just find it hilarious uh, just the more of the sexualization of the of the women and so the women think that, you know, to be to be um, important or to, you know, the women's empowering movement, this is how you get empowered. You get up on a stage and you dance in scandalous clothing. That's not how, that's not what creates power. That it, I mean, in their rituals it does, but, you know, what happened to women being the, the matriarch, the one in the household, the one taking care of the family in the household, like, They've taken that away, and they've, you know, they've skewed things and flipped it on its head, and they have girls idolizing to become like these these celebrities, and you know, dancing around, shaking their butt on stage is that's power these days, and that's we've got to get away from this. We've got to open our eyes and see what's going on. Back to Post Malone for a second. He is complete and total sellout, wearing uh, black and white checkerboard clothing flashing the devil horns, wearing a serpent on his coat. Just, he's one of their puppets, and he's leading people astray, just like all the rest of them. So, I know I did the other video with all the, the numerology and stuff. Uh, it's not a surprise to me that the end score totaled to be six. That's not 
any surprise to me whatsoever. Um, at halftime, their total yards was like 911, I believe. I saw that flash across the screen. The 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 total up um, total yards for both teams added together ended up being 911. It, they've they've put numbers and symbols and all of this stuff, and it's just our job to open our eyes and and see what's going on in front of us. You know, they like to hide this stuff, and it's easy to get wrapped up in it. It's easy to be distracted by the lady in the red dress. It's easy to to not pay attention to what's going on around you. But we're literally in a matrix. And if you've not watched that movie in a while, you should probably revisit it and just try and open your eyes to it. You know, it's it's crazy. That's really all I got for you. Um, I'm going to leave a link below of the actual Super Bowl halftime show. Um, if y'all see anything that I didn't mention, please mention it in the comments. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. If you like the content, just uh, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys for taking the time.